Today on E! News, how the Lethbridge College took part in a national men's health initiative, how the Lethbridge Food Bank has adapted to COVID-19 restrictions, and how local businesses are preparing for the Christmas season. Hello and welcome to E! News. I'm Nathan Ryder and here's today's top story. It was a hair-raising month around Lethbridge College, but for a reason much different than you might think one that has nothing to do with COVID-19. Men grew out their mustaches during the month of November and it was all for a good cause. The Movember movement has grown over the years promoting men's health and Lethbridge College took part in the initiative. Josiah Spiker has the story. The Lethbridge College Students Association helped raise money for Movember last month, although it looked a little different because of COVID-19. There were less mustaches roaming the halls of Lethbridge College this year. Even for those partaking in the movement, their mustaches were usually covered up by a mask. The LCSA still wanted to do its part by raising funds for prostate and testicular cancer research. LCSA Events and Communications Coordinator Tanner Marser says he's always enjoyed taking part in Movember. And the LCSA has come up with new ways of raising the money. We've uh, moved to an online donation uh, format. So we're getting people to submit videos of themselves doing push-ups. And then we're going to donate a dollar to Movember for every 10 push-ups we receive. The movement was created in 2003 to raise money for prostate and testicular cancer research. Since 2003, Movember has funded over 1,200 men's health projects. Over 22 million people have donated to Movember, raising over $1 billion towards men's health. Movember's next goal is to reduce the number of men dying prematurely by 25% by the year 2030. There's a reason why Movember has been so successful. It's because it hits close to home for so many people. Lethbridge College Occupational Health and Safety Team lead Frank Zappone always grows a mustache for Movember to remember his father. It was a very simple decision for me. Um, my dad passed away in 2005 due to prostate cancer and it was on December 1st. Although Movember started as a way to raise money for prostate and testicular cancer, it has now grown. The movement also focuses on men's mental health, suicide prevention, and how to be a better father. Josiah Spiker, E! News. Students and staff that may be struggling with mental health, the Lethbridge College Wellness Services is open Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Food banks in Lethbridge have been working hard to prepare for the demand they anticipate in the coming weeks during the cold winter months. Jackson McGinn looks into what the impacts are from COVID-19 at the local food banks. As a nonprofit organization, the Lethbridge Food Bank depends on donations from individuals and businesses. Since 1982, Lethbridge Food Bank has been supporting people with access to food and community resources to feed the need. Executive Director Marla Kanadi Tara says COVID-19 has had a huge impact on the food bank, especially in the way it operates. We definitely responded quite quickly to the pandemic and um, it has altered our output of our programs. Every food bank runs differently, but one thing that is standard these days is pandemic protocols. In addition, volunteers have experienced burnouts but remain dedicated to the organization. Lethbridge Food Bank, Interfaith Food Bank, and My City Care says they will be banding together to coordinate emergency food services for our most vulnerable citizens. In the run-up in the Christmas holiday season, the Lethbridge Food Bank has seen its highest numbers of clients due to bills being much higher in the colder months. Staff say cash donations are appreciated, but you can help in other ways as well. So there's definitely multiple different ways to be able to uh, contribute to our, um, our organization. Uh, we encourage people to give their time through volunteering, um, donate food or non-perishable, perishable. Jackson McGinn, E! News. Food banks have reported that they've seen an increase in client traffic since the pandemic started due to job losses or reduction in work hours. Local businesses don't in downtown Lethbridge are gearing up for the Christmas rush with less than a month until the big day. Carson Marsuk is standing by with more details. Carson? That's right, Nathan. Black Friday was an event in the States but has recently moved its way up to Canada and is better known as the 
as the start of unofficial start of the holiday season. I went downtown to chat with a couple business owners about the upcoming season and some new changes customers can expect. The sidewalks are busy in downtown Lethbridge as there is less than one month until the big day and local businesses have started to see customers coming out and completing their Christmas shopping. The Sill and Soil, a local garden centre in downtown Lethbridge, began operating in January of 2018 by attending different markets and using an online store. But in August of 2020, it made the switch to downtown storefront location and is currently preparing for the Christmas season. From just like the conversations that I've been having with people, um, they, there has definitely been a lot of people already starting or finishing their Christmas shopping. So yeah, it's definitely happening, <laughs> happening already. Many people are shopping earlier to beat the crowds. The Sill and Soil is providing customers with sanitizer and masks are mandatory. Lee says the vibe that downtown offers with different markets and festivals attracted her to opening shop there. Feels like community down in downtown Lethbridge and you can't beat the architecture. I have a beautiful brick wall in my store, beautiful west facing windows. And um, a surprising amount of foot traffic comes, comes down my way. And when you're shopping for Christmas, there is a list of local businesses that can use your support. The list has been posted to the Sale and Soils social media pages. Umami Shop has also made new changes in preparation for the holiday season. Owner Patricia Liu says Umami Shop has transitioned its whole store online for people to shop from home, as well as cooking classes have gone virtual. We're, we're a specialty store, so we see it um, affect, like affecting us immediately because a lot of products are coming from um, outside of Canada. Uh, so there's a supply chain uh, problem. In preparation for the Christmas rush, Umami Shop has recently added gift certificates for customers to purchase. Local businesses in Lethbridge offer a wide range of gift ideas to choose from. There is a place, I think, for big box stores. Um, but if you can, I would say um, local is an amazing, an amazing option. This year's Bright Light Festival that usually takes place in the middle of November was cancelled due to COVID-19, but organizers are hopeful that the event will take place next year. Businesses also encourage people to check out their social media pages and online websites for more information. Nathan? Thanks, Carson. Coming up after the break, Sylvia Adam takes over the desk. She'll show how a family-owned coffee company is staying true to their roots. And a Filipino immigrant tells her story of moving to Canada without her family. Stay with us. The Lethbridge Food Bank works hard to help the Lethbridge community, and so can you. As an important part of the community, the Lethbridge Food Bank ensures a food security resource for those in need. The Lethbridge Food Bank is a nonprofit organization and depends on people like you to donate and volunteer. By donating any number of food items, you are helping your community. Cash donations are also very helpful and can be made through lethbridgefoodbank.ca. Donate or volunteer today and help make a difference by feeding the need. Every year, the Salvation Army has many fundraisers. The Christmas Kettle Campaign is one of the most important. The Christmas Kettle Campaign raises money to provide practical and material assistance to people throughout the year. When you give to the Salvation Army, you are giving hope by investing in the future of people in need. If you would like to donate around Christmas time, just drop some change into the Salvation Army Christmas Kettles around town or donate online any other time of the year at SalvationArmy.ca. The Salvation Army's Christmas Kettle Campaign, helping those in need. People all over Canada get dogs when they aren't ready for them. As a result, lots of dogs get surrendered to local organizations that work to rehome these fur babies. Dogs deserve their forever home, and that's where we come in. At Windy City Canine Rescue, our dogs go into our care until we find their perfect home. We're always looking for volunteers and foster families who love dogs. If you're interested in volunteering, contact us today at WindyCityRescue.com. The Lethbridge Historical Society is a group dedicated to preserving the history of Lethbridge since 1888. We work in partnership with the city to put up plaques honoring historic buildings. By joining as a member, you can help ensure history is not forgotten. The Lethbridge Historical Society gives you a chance to write history in books and create fun events. 
Together, we can celebrate the past and change the future with Lethbridge Historical Society. You may even leave a mark on Lethbridge history. For more information, go to lethbridgehistory.org. Parents are a student's greatest resource, but sometimes you don't have all the answers. It can be difficult for your children to decide what to do after graduation. Career Transitions helps students make that decision by providing career exploration programs and services. With the opportunity to learn from industry professionals, your child can discover exciting careers and develop a plan to succeed. Career Transitions helps students develop the confidence they need to discover their dreams and make them a reality. Visit our website today at careersteps.ca to learn more about how you can help your child conquer their future. Every year, pets are abandoned, found, or surrendered to us. In need of a forever home, many people choose to adopt, and you can too. At the Lethbridge Humane Society, we take great pride in the care we provide to our animals. When you adopt from the Lethbridge Humane Society, you're adopting a lifelong friend and companion. For more information on what we have available for adoption, call us at 403-320-8991. Help us give our furry friends a second chance and adopt at the Lethbridge Humane Society today. Welcome back, I'm Sylvia Adam. For those of us who enjoy a cup of coffee in the morning, the smell of freshly ground coffee beans helps us start our day. Now we have the opportunity to enjoy coffee that is grown and collected by family members of some Lethbridge residents. Alejandra Polito report. The smell of freshly roasted coffee lingers in the air. Dylan Morris, co-owner of Little Nicaragua Coffee Company, grabs a new bag of green coffee beans brought straight from their family farm in Nicaragua a few months back to continue the roasting process. I always tell people it's as local as coffee can be because we can't grow in Canada, but the fact that we are the farm and the roasters is really what sets us apart from uh, everybody in Lethbridge. Their coffee is grown and hand-picked in a farm in Nicaragua that has been in his in-laws family for generations. The family has been working on making it self-sufficient for the last 12 years and it is finally getting to the point where they are getting enough coffee to be able to bring it up and offer it to our Lethbridge community. Our farm is located in the Kirawa. Kirawa is a group of mountains right in the middle of the country. We cannot cut any trees. We only are allowed to plant coffee where existing coffee was before. It is a process that takes time and effort, but with the support from their family in Nicaragua and the ability to visit the farm every once in a while, Little Nicaragua Coffee Company owners are now able to help Lethbridge citizens get their caffeine fix from locally roasted coffee. The last part of the process is packaging the roasted coffee for people to enjoy it at home freshly grounded. They offer their coffee as whole beans because this way it retains the flavor for longer. All our packaging, uh, we try to be as environmentally friendly as possible. So all our packaging is, uh, I believe it's 95% compostable. Our cups are 100% compostable. Same with our uh, plastic cups we use for cold coffee. Those are 100% compostable as well. As well as our straws, it's all paper. So everything we use um, that gets thrown out a lot, we try to make it as environmentally friendly as possible. Alejandra Pulido, E! News. Little Nicaragua Coffee Company also helps the local economy by sourcing locally whenever possible. From using a local printing company for their cards and labels to acquiring countertops from a locally owned and operated granite company. After 10 years of being in Canada and formerly working as a foreigner temporary worker for six years, a local permanent resident has decided to start up a business. Mario Cabardilla has more on her story. It took six years for a Filipino permanent resident to reunite her family in Canada. Ten years ago, she came to the country, like many other immigrants, to find a better future. When I just moved in here, I, it was so difficult for me. There was a big culture shock comparing back home and in here. In the beginning, the biggest struggle she faced was coping with her loneliness. During my first tweak, it was so hard for me because when I was looking out by the window of um, my employer's house, I could not see any people outside. So it seems 
I was thinking by the time that life is so lonely in here. With the support of her friends and that hope of being able to bring her family in the future is what kept her going. I said to myself that life must go on. Finally, after six years of waiting, the Canadian government approved her application for permanent residency. Together with her family, it allowed them to come over and start a new life. In just a month ago, Nancy takes a step towards her next goal, starting a business. Nancy collects parcels in Lutbridge before dropping them off to Calgary, avoiding the need for Filipinos living in Lethbridge to drive hours for their shipping needs. For now, Nancy is looking to stabilize the business, hoping that it will provide a reliable source of income in the future. Marie Carbadilla, E! News. Despite COVID-19, Andizo was hoping that in the future, the risk will all be worth it. In sports, a long journey through professional baseball has come full circle for one local coach. Dustin Mulliken is coaching in Lethbridge almost two decades after he played as a member of the Prairie Baseball Academy. Nathan Ryder had the opportunity to speak with Dustin and learn more about his story. It's been 18 years since Dustin Mulliken was a player for the Prairie Baseball Academy in 2002. Now the 36-year-old former major leaguer is back as the program's pitching coach. Mulliken was selected in the 15th round of the 2003 MLB June Amateur Draft by the Pittsburgh Pirates out of the PBA. It took Mulliken over 13 years, including spending time overseas in the Nippon Professional Baseball League and five major league organizations before the Detroit Tigers called him up in 2016. Mulliken says the opportunity was something he will always remember. And like I'll always have that with me, and then I can share that with my uh, uh, share it with me, and then I got home forever. So and like it's uh, I'm very honored. However, it wasn't just a long trip through the minor leagues that Mulliken had to persevere. He deals with a speech impediment that causes him to stutter while speaking. However, he hasn't let that stop him. Like the older I got, it was easier. So. If you struggle uh, with uh, 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 how you struggle, just like just figure it out, and then like I know it'll be hard on you every so often. Mulliken doesn't allow the stutter to affect the way he coaches. Pitcher Kyle Popst, entering his fifth year in the PBA program, says people are always willing to listen. Like ready to listen to him or help him out if he needs a. Uh... If he needs to get something out, but he's uh, he's pretty good at getting across what he wants to say. And if it takes an extra minute, like no worries to any of us because we really want to hear what he's got to say. Pop says having someone of Mulliken's experience coaching at PBA this year is a huge plus. All the coaching he's gotten, uh, I think the experience is, is just uh, you can tell by the uh, by way he talks and everything. And having Rhett this year as well is uh, has been a big plus. Mulliken is now retired from professional baseball and is looking forward to a long and prosperous coaching career. For E! News, I'm Nathan Ryder. Although the PBA has been shut down due to the recent COVID-19 restrictions, there is optimism their season will get underway in the new year. A Brooks fitness coach has been forced to make big changes to the way she runs her business. New COVID-19 protocols mean she has to help her clients achieve their fitness goals virtually. I took the opportunity to go down to Anytime Fitness in Brooks and speak to her. A fitness coach in Brooks, Alberta, Samantha Anderson has been running her own fitness training business for about two years now. As a child, Anderson was always active. Um, I've always been active uh, growing up. I was active going for hikes, going for walks, um, keeping busy with the family. Um, growing up, I was always in sports. Every, all the sports, volleyball, basketball, track and field, badminton, everything. Anderson specializes in helping clients lose weight and increasing their energy levels and confidence. 
She teaches her clients how to shift and change their mindset, nutritional lifestyle changes, and a workout plan to help them achieve their goals. But achieving those goals isn't as cut and dried as it used to be, even a few months ago. In order to help her clients achieve their fitness goals, Anderson needs to figure out their purpose for achieving their fitness goal and the underlying issue that they want to try and accomplish. To have a successful business, Anderson says she has to make sure she has a good mindset. She admits motivation can be a challenge itself when isolation is as important as exercise and nutrition. Running your own business, you do have to have a good mindset because even though I don't have a client till 10 a.m., I still got to wake up, start my morning routine, still have a good mindset going in, set my goals for the day. Due to COVID-19, Anderson has had to teach her classes virtually. She has no choice but to consider herself an online trainer because she does virtual boot camp classes and her eight-week transformation challenges online. She says how long this new way of doing business will be with her is anybody's guess. Sylvia Adam, E! News. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic and having to teach classes virtually, Anderson's business has continued to flourish. That's all the time we have for E! News this week. I'm Sylvia Adam. For all of us here at E! News, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.